So our hideout is ready and now we are going to get some gold for King Richard the Lionheart. What's up everybody? Welcome to the episode 3 of Adventures of Robin Hood. So yeah, we have our hideout already and set up and now it's time to get some gold for Richard the Lionheart in this episode, episode 3. So yeah, without further ado, let's switch up to the camera, to the uh, above camera and uh, let's continue our adventure. Okay, so I already did most of the setup and uh, basically some guards and noblemen are showed up all over the board like down here over here uh, again i'm playing uh, for the first time so this will be number one and uh, the new thing is when the when we need to put the level three in we're going to put this purple one in the bag the disc purple disc but i also uh, had an option to play an easy mode and put the gray one in which I decided to use because I want to have fun, most of all. So we are playing this on easy mode, just so you know. We have eight hourglasses over here that will probably, if they all run out, we are going to be defeated. Uh, as you remember, probably from the last time, uh, we got our secret camp over here. And now uh, we stole, we need uh, like uh, some gold for King uh, Richard the Lionheart. Uh, I'm gonna read you a little bit of story. Uh, so uh, Gisborne is over here. He will again chase us around, which is mostly terrible if you ask me. But uh, yeah, so uh, I did all the preparations, everything. So uh, one thing I learned, all the items that you have from the previous game, you lose if you don't use them. So in this game, I will probably be uh, using these items way more because I know I can save them for the future games Which I was hoping I can do so I can you know stack up for the harder scenarios as the game goes, but yeah So chapter 3 gold for Richard the Lionheart So I'm gonna read you a little bit of story and then we are going to proceed with playing uh, The message that Robin Hood and his friends have dared to rob some noblemen spread like wildfire and because it was known that they gave everything they got their hands on to the hungry there glowed a tiny spark of hope in the hearts of the poor rural population so we got uh, poor guys on our side now because we showed some compassion so uh, then all of this is just a preparation and now for the story itself it was a moonless night. A single candle lit up the circular tower room. The profiles of two men were ba bathed in red light. One of them opened and closed his mouth several times without saying a word. The other kept a sharp eye on him. Finally, the first man composed himself and whispered, That, that is high treason. Sir, your brother, he will hang us side by side. I never ask you for opinion, Sheriff, answered the man oppos opposite him. Everything is ready. My plan will work. The speaker leant back in his chair, so he, his slim face completely disappeared into the darkness. I merely ask you where you wanted to be a part of this plan or not. After a while, the Sheriff nodded. Yes, Your Highness, I'm your man. First thing tomorrow, I will begin gathering the new war tags. Then he blew out the candle and we continue reading after only a few days uh, the bad news reached the secret camp of the outlaws the sheriff had seized every asset of the people of nottingham his mean had even taken the small golden cross of the church for the king's crusade they said now okay so now we have to flip over tile 251 church roof so the cross is no longer visible so tile where is the church? Church, okay, so it's here, 251. And yeah, of course, I can't pry it out. So I'm gonna use the knife and probably damage it a little bit, but this is the only way I find out it's working. Okay, so the cross is gone. And uh, chest upon chest full of coins and treasures were now stored in Nottingham Castle, ready to be transported down the south. Flip the tile 72 in the castle courtyard, so it shows question mark. This is the treasure trove. 
Okay, so the tile 72 is this big one and let's hope I will not damage it that much. Come on. Okay, so I think we are good. Okay, so this is where they are keeping all the treasures. So I'm guessing we're gonna have to sneak in here and try to steal some treasures. <laughs> Uh, the rope is now not available anymore, so we can't go this route, so I guess we're gonna have to do something else. I know that we can use this to enter, I think, if I remember correctly, we're gonna have to see. Robin began to speak. The sheriff has already squeezed enough out of the people of the country. I say we do not allow them to take everything. So, as we are now playing the easy mode for the first time, I'm going to read this part over this part over here so but robin how are we going to get into the castle and if we manage to steal a chest full of gold how are we going to open it aim of this adventure is you have to steal and open a chest of gold from the treasure trove before all the hourglasses have been removed from the bad end first task you have to find a way to get into the castle in order to examine the treasure trove 72 that's this one. You also have to find someone who is able to open the chest. There's a tip here. Think carefully about who could help you here. There. Now place the gold ribbon here between pages and draw your first disc from the bag. Of course I already prepared the bag with all the discs, with all the purple cubes. There's a bunch of purple cubes in there. So all the discs, all the, all the purple cubes, everything is in here. Uh, one thing is, uh, this fellow over here, he usually moves to the closest uh, figure he can see, but if we are both in a camp, he doesn't see us. Uh, I looked through it, but I never found anything about it. I forgot. Oh, I just remembered now. I have this. Uh, so what, what I'm interested in is, 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 is he moving if uh, he does not see us, you know? Yeah. Basically, if we are both hidden or if we are on these like straw bridges, stuff like that, uh, he will not be able to see us, so he will not move then. So that's what I was thinking about and I just completely forgot I had that rule book in there. Okay, so first disc out. Oh, of course, I forgot to mention one new thing uh, before we start. We have a bow now. The bow means actually that we get this cute little token and I can attack guard from distance for example let's say that Robin Hood is standing I don't know over here I can say I will try and use a bow to attack him and if the arrow is touching me and overlapping the tile I can shoot him from the distance and basically do the attack maneuver uh, like normal which is uh, which is really cool but we only have one arrow so far so yeah okay so first disc out of the bag okay so before we start we need to figure out who can get us in so beggar probably knows the way you know he's hanging here around the walls he probably knows something he can give us his clothes and we can go in like you know like in the movies they usually do stuff like that uh, this guy showed up this is new so i presume we are maybe able to talk to him about that i know that over here we can get some white cubes into the bag because now right now there's 12 purple violet cubes and just two white cubes in the bag so yeah let's start moving and let's start drawing tiles and see what happens that was that's my options if i remember correctly this thing over here was able to no we were able to hide hide in here or move it over here so someone can jump from it over here so yeah that's not an option this guy is here now he wasn't here from on the previous scenarios so i guess he maybe can hide us and you know get us in a city somewhere over here the tile can, i i don't know we'll have to see okay first disc from the first disc from the bag is the gray one the gray disc means that anyone can move and i will try and move which one okay so let's go first with the yeah come on okay let's first go with the robin hood but i don't want to attack this guy yet or should i 
I mean, if I get captured right away, that would be so bad. No, not the Robin Hood. First, the little John will move because he's closest to this thing over here. Mm -hmm. So he will be able to move first on it. And so he ends up over here. And that's his movement done because I didn't use that fast travel thingy one white cube goes in a bag and another disc i pull out is the white disc and that means that both guys are moving because i'm playing two pair that means that both guys are moving so first we are going to move with the little john and he's going to run over here to this guy to ask him stuff so that's what he's about to do okay like this and then like this yeah i have another of these but i'm not using them for some reason so he moved i put one white cube into the bag because he didn't use the long run thingy and then the robin hood goes and he will just move like this and uh, that's our turn done. Another white cube into the bag. Now I feel confident I can fight some of them if I have to. So, purple. Okay, so Robin Hood is in the hiding, but uh, we can't hide in the shadows from guy, Gisborne guy. So he will go toward little John. And he will move like this. Okay. And then the next disc, oh, I forgot. When he moves, he also does some bad stuff, of course. Okay, dark events, violet disc. Continue reading here if you draw on the violet disc. The threat is growing. Now throw one violet cube per player into the bag. Yeah, I completely forgot about that part from the last game. It's been a few days until, I, until when I played it. Now move the shortest route, which we did. Uh, and uh, this player loses one of the three movement figures if he touches it, like all the things we know. And that's that, we continue drawing from the bag and see who goes next. Okay, next one, red. When the red shows up, the guards would attack, but luckily there's no guards that can see us right now, but still I think they do some bad stuff. They down the moral. The hope in the land sinks by one per player so moral sinks by two which means i have to start attacking these guys you know to get my moral up and we have a, a now turn over the seal in the seal recess two at the top so we have to flip this seal on the top and see what happens there uh so flip over the guards noblemen unless the hexagonal hourglass is on them also flip over the carriage tile octagonal carriage tile oh orthogonal 22 carriage tile 22 we have to flip that one where is it okay so yeah let's start first we have to flip four and ten 10 is over here, which is good. Little John can attack him, maybe, possibly. Okay, 10 and uh, 4. Where's the 4? This is the 5. Here's the 7, the 3. Where's the number 4 guy? Here's the 8 guy. I have to consult the book on the back. Oh, the number 4 guy is over here, which means he flips on the other side and he's gone. So, unless here there is an hourglass on them, also flip over the carriage tile, octagonal. Okay, so noblemen 17 and 20 also show up. Nobleman 20 is here, and where's the 17 guy? Okay, so nobleman 17 is over here. I think we haven't ever flipped this one yet. Yeah, it's pretty firmly in there. So 17 and uh, 20, 20 was over here. Ooh, I could even attack him, get some. This golden bag we learned is really good. And we have to flip over the carriage, the green one, 22. And where, this is 24. Where's the carriage? Where's the octagonal tile? 
25. Where's 24? Come on, we're losing precious time over here. Where is the carriage? Somewhere in the woods maybe? Oh, 22, it's here. So this thing shows up. I presume this is the carriage that's carrying the gold and we have to try and uh, try and get it somehow. We can't interact with it because it doesn't have the question mark on it. That's weird. Okay, uh, there's a new rule in play. A player can steal a carriage and use it to travel into the castle. Ooh, that's how we can get into the castle. For this, they must defeat the driver. To do so, they need to draw two white cubes from the bag in one turn. The reward is the player flips over the tile for the carriage and any octagonal tile in the castle courtyard. They are allowed to place their standing figure on the coach box. From there they can jump onto the castle wall or the ground. Note, this is one of the several ways into the castle. Yeah, but pulling two white cubes and with constantly this guy pulling cubes in there, this is going to be a pretty tough. So the guards now attack and uh, we have no guards uh, that can see us, so we are all good. Uh, time passes, remove the top hourglass so the time passes. And if the hopes is at zero, another hourglass is removed, but it is not, so we continue playing. And now we have a way of getting into castle, which is, I must say, pretty hard. So we can try and enter, I mean, but this carriage is too far away. Once I, when I reach it, it's going to be like way too much for me. I think this guy gives us some white cubes into the bag, so I think we can do that. Let's draw it, let's draw from the bag and see what happens. Okay, blue, little John moves. And I believe little John could maybe go and attack this guy number 10. Can he reach him with the normal move? And uh, not so much. Oh my God, there's like a, little millimeter missing for for me to 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 catch him so let's see if i can maneuver it somehow differently maybe and try and get no no this is mission impossible i can't do that i can't catch it unless i use the run which i really don't want to so i'm just gonna move over there and uh, see if I'm going to be playing. Uh, yeah, now for some reason I get him, but I guess I no, I I don't get him because I, I probably pushed some of my some of my components, but uh, I didn't get him. But I get one white cube into the bag because I didn't use the run option. So the last disc, if I'm not mistaken, is the green one, of course. And uh, Robin Hood will go and attack Nobleman because the Nobleman is worth way more than the guard, if I'm not mistaken, regarding all the possibilities what can be done. So I can basically do it like this and just keep it over here. No. So I can. Okay. Uh, now what can, what I can do is let me just quickly re reference the rules because I kind of forgot all my options. I mean I didn't forget them, but uh, you know I just need a little bit of reminder of what I can do. I know it's on this side, but I can't flip it now. Basically, I want to attack the nobleman, which means I will draw three cubes from the bag and if I pull the white one I win if I pull three purple ones I lose the best thing is to pull two purple and then white but uh, that was not the case so far so first one is purple which is good it's not returned to the bag so there's less purple now in the bag the second one is also a purple oh my god will he get arrested by the nobleman come on give me the white one Ah, oh, three purple cubes. Okay, 
Now I have to check out what happens if I get all the purple cubes because I haven't been catched so far. So I know that the rules are somewhere easy to access but I completely forgot where so I'll need to uh, check it out a little bit and hope okay examine actually defeat in order to defeat an opponent you draw three cubes out of the way if they draw violet cubes if the opponent is defeated their tile is flipped over it's not if a guard or noble is flipped face down If they draw only violet cubes, they have unfortunately not defeated their opponent. Nothing else happens on their next turn, they can try it again. Oh, I can try it again. Is that correct? Now I'm a little bit puzzled because I believe if I was defeated, I couldn't do that. Okay, so let me just quickly look through the book. Yeah, nothing happens, basically. So, yeah, nothing happens. I can actually continue next turn. I was 100% sure that I would get caught for some strange reason, but I guess I'm not, so we continue drawing from the bag, but we don't have anything in the bag, which means we just put all of these discs back in the bag, we shuffle them up, and we continue drawing. Okay, first one is purple, of course, and the closest one to him is, but we need to first put two purple cubes in the bag. I just pulled out three, but let's put two more in. So he goes for little John because little John is the closest one to him. And uh, we continue drawing from the bag. The green one, which means we can try and we can try and uh, move or attack again that nobleman. I'm going to try and I'm going to try and attack that nobleman once more. But then, when the red one shows up, this guy will attack me. And noblemen usually don't attack. Ah, uh, why this guy has to be over here? Why? Okay, so what can I do next? With the Robin Hood so my options are either to risk it or not I mean I want to get inside you know and this Gisborne guy is really going toward us so I'm just gonna move the Robin Hood like over here and attack this guard over here because I really want him gone I don't want him to attack me so first one is the white cube which means he is defeated and we get our hope up by one it's not much but it's an honest work and then we continue playing and because i haven't moved i forgot i needed to put one white cube in because i didn't use the quick move turn so the gray one the gray one i will use for little john also to move just like so so he's closer to the this guy but still close enough to attack the guard and then he will attack the guard because it didn't move i will put one white cube into the bag shuffle it a little bit and draw out of the bag so the purple cube is one the second one is also purple come on Give me the white one, I need it. Come on, come on, come on, come on. White cube, white cube. Yes! The third pool, to be the white cube on the third pool is the best. Oh, also I forgot to put the hourglass on this guy. So, and on this guy. So they will not show up that quickly. Which is good. Because now I have some time to, you know, 
rummage around the map a little bit without the fear of getting caught by these guys. And because I defeated it, the hope goes up one level. And then the next disc we pull out, and the next disc is the red one. Luckily, nobody attacks us because we killed all the guards, but still some stuff happened. Uh, so the hope sinks uh, one for each player, which means we all did, we did all that for almost nothing. Uh, so we need to turn the seal in a recess to wait. But I already did that. Oh, I forgot. I needed to place the ribbon. Oh, I'm sorry. I needed to place the ribbon on the next page. 38, 39, which I mistakenly did not. Luckily, uh, Gisborne doesn't do anything different, but uh, the carriage now moves and stuff like that. Okay, so what happens is, a uh, carriage escaped into the castle. If a face-up carriage is on the forest, flip over its tile and any octagonal tile in the castle courtyard. Note, once carriages are in the castle, they can no longer be stolen. Of course. I mean, but it showed up so far away. How was I supposed to know, you know? Am I going to be able to catch it or not? Okay, this, this tile is, doesn't want to get out, which is insane. Okay, so this carriage is gone, and now we have to flip octagonal, either 25 or 23. And... Uh, Let's see what, because I saw already this one and I wanted to see what's on this one. So I'm going to flip this one over and see how it looks. Okay, so the carriage is here in the shadows. Okay, so what happens next? The hope in the land sinks one per player. I already did that. Draw a seal from the bag and insert it face up into the third seal recess. Throw the violet and if applicable the gray disc from the, there into the bag. If the bard is depicted on the seal, the hope sinks by one. Flip over the stated guards, noblemen. Also flip over the carriage tile, octagonal. Okay, so wait. But the carriage, okay, so, okay. First of all, I draw this seal. So this two goes in the bag, which is not good. This guy will now be very quick to move and attack us. Okay, so now we need to flip the guards, five, okay, guard five, eight, ten, eleven, five, guard, guard five, guard eight, oh, oops, I bumped the board, so I believe he was standing somewhere over here, and this guy was like this, and like this, I bumped the book, so I guess I'm gonna have to keep it elsewhere, so I don't do that stuff again. Okay, so uh, Gisborne was somewhere around here, I presume. Okay, uh, five, eight, eight, guard number eight. Where is the guard? Okay, the guard number eight is down here, and uh, guard 10, guard 10 is currently not available, and guard 11 goes away. Which is good so that means i can go around and see what this wheel is all about you know i can maybe try and research that if there will be enough time for it okay so next thing is uh, noblemen's 15 16 21 so 15 16 this guy is 20 so 16 is over here he flips on this side 16 we have a 15 nobleman number 15 where is the nobleman number 15 there's a 14 over here 21 means that this one shows up out of nowhere gives us a horn if you kill it and uh, 21 no 15 right 15 this one 15 16 21 yeah so this guy shows up okay so they all showed up, the carriage didn't show up. I don't know if that's luck or not, but uh, let's start drawing from the bag and now the Gisborne will move again, which is going to be a tough one. Okay, so next one is gray one and I'm going to do a movement with little John because 
This horse showed up for this scenario, so I figure it must be of some importance. So I'm gonna do it like this. And the Gisborne will now move this way so I can, you know, lead them away from Robin Hood, stuff like that. Okay, so we can now interact with the tile 74 and see what the tile 74 says. Okay, let's quickly go to the page 74. The messenger, if we are playing uh, gold for King Richard, we have to read the part. Okay, outlaws, shouts out, shouts the horseman. I am, si I am a simple messenger, please let me pass. I will share my supplies with you since I have already reached my destination. You may now place a cube of your color in the image of the supplies. Now flip over the messenger tile. So we get one blue supplies and supplies is what actually oh it's like a food and stuff it's this thing over here and it tells us you have one extra turn you can use it one time instead of drawing the next this from the bag you must then return your cube from the supply okay so i can play an extra turn basically that's really nice you know extra turn for for him so he can run away from Gisborne. That would be cool. Okay, uh, next up, we move, we draw another tile, and I presume it's going to be a purple one. Of course it is. So it's Gisborne moving again, and uh, I believe this is the closest way, even though I don't like it, because this thing over here looks like, you know, got to be a little bit more around, so. I'm gonna move him over here like this so he will chase oh I have to read the stuff what happens what happens when he moves so I have to throw one violet cube in the bag for each of the players as usual now moving via the shortest route now you even can see you on your tree bridge or a secret camp or, a ca or in a castle oh if we are in a castle he will ignore us that's uh, that's really good okay uh, that's that let's start moving again okay so the white one means that we both move both players will move and um, I guess I guess I will go over to these mushrooms because I know they throw in some white cubes in the bag and uh, then I will try to like lure Gisborne over here and then run around, make him run for me and, or maybe make a run past him and just go for this beggar. I believe this beggar can tell us how to get into the castle. He knows some secret passages or something. I am 100% sure about it. So maybe even this, because we need, we are searching for a cross, maybe the Pope or whoever this guy is can help us. So that's a viable option too, which means I could use Robin Hood, you know, to run over here and try to to go to this guy, which I will do, which I will do. Okay, so I will move Robin Hood over this part over here and be completely in the shadows. So this nobleman can't attack me oh but noblemen can attack but still if this guy shows up he can attack me so you know uh was i able maybe to get to this guy and attack him wait i was standing somewhere around here let's check out what can we do so what if i use like this line more straightforward line yeah then i would need to use the fast one but Attacking these noblemen is really important because they move this guy really all the way up, which is good. Okay, so I'm going, going to move like this and I will not put white cube in a bag, but I will interact with this nobleman and try to attack him. Of course, we are drawing three times and I get the white cube on the first try and he gives us a sword and plus two. A sword, which is really good. So I have a sword as the Robin Hood and we get plus two on this board and then the the 
Little John moves and he goes something like this but very short wait I don't have to use this one I can probably touch it like this okay yes I can so we have a tile 160 to interact with let's see what happens okay tile 160 and we are currently on a gold for King Richard quest which means page 163 uh, you find some mushrooms but wait this type is poisonous who <laughs> you discover some mushroom stumps that have been pulled out someone has been careless enough and has already eaten some of them you may now place one hourglass on one face up guard of your choice they cannot attack a player before the hourglass has been removed as a result of dark events now flip over the mushroom tile so we need to flip over the mushroom tile okay but first we need to like make one guard go away i guess i don't know which guard there's currently no guards that we are in a trouble of but this guy could make a trouble for me so i'm gonna put it on him because i'm planning on running with the robin hood over here and uh once the red event has happened, I should probably move, move, I should have probably moved it to page 40 or 41. Dark events red. Okay, so I had to move, like I already have the red one out, I think I forgot to remove one of these hourglasses. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven. Yeah, one of these should have been removed and this should have been put on a 40, 41 space. Dark event. Because I was carried away, the carriage went into castle and I then forgot to do all the other things. I draw a seal from the bag, guards attack, but I haven't removed the time pass thing, so kind of forgot a little bit about it. Okay, so our one guard is poisoned and that's kind of okay and little john stays over here like so and uh, then we have another tile to move and that's again little john tile where is it it's the last one it's over here and uh, little john moves and little john could in fact go over to this guy and interact with him maybe we are able to get in a town that way because I figure he does something else depending on this depending what the scenario is so oh when I moved with the him I haven't put the white cube in because I haven't used the like a speed turn thingy and again I haven't run so one white cube goes into bag and then I interact with the tile 80 just a second I got some messages nothing important so tile 80 let's see tile number 80 so we need to find the page 80 and we are doing the gold for king richard which means we need to go to page 83 uh, farmer ulrich pulls the ox reins and the cart comes to a standstill then he wipes the sweat from his brow what do you want speak quickly it's too hot to roast in the sun till all saints day do you want to ask for a way to get into the castle or b want to find someone that can break open the chest or c want to ask for aid so i guess i could ask him for aid he could get me in probably so i want to ask him for an aid so the c the answer c says help an outlaw no i would be no i would be completely crazy he shouts loudly at the same time he quickly looks around and throws a loaf of bread at you from his wagon you may now place one cube of your color on the image of the supplies so that's really good because now we can do all kinds of extra turns now flip over the farmer tile unfortunately that was not the answer that i was hoping that we are going to get but what can you do and now the Gisborne will go over here oh my god i wish he would just play two times so i can you know run past him around him and just flee away and talk to this beggar guy but uh, we'll have to see okay so all the tiles are out uh, nothing in the bag right 
so we throw in all this back in and uh, we continue playing so the next one is white one which means we both move and now I can like risk it like super crazy risk it which I really don't want to and uh, he would be probably kept I mean I can go over here but if this guy plays two times in a row then I'm captured and I will lose one of these for entire adventure which is absolutely not an option at least not this early in the game but I could not move at all with him right now and just uh, use an arrow to attack this nobleman and I will do that so I will put one white cube into the bag and I will use arrow for him to attack this nobleman and I'm drawing three cubes and I will get something so I guess little John will be the star of this uh, so the purple one is the first. I guess he, I guess he will be the star of this uh, scenario. It looks like so. So again, a purple one. Come on, don't get captured. And the white one. Yes, the best outcome is the outcome when you pull the white on the third pull. So two up and one of these. So two on the morale thing and one of these bags. And if I remember correctly, those bags were insanely good. As I said, I haven't played for a few days now and I completely forgot what some of these items do, you know. Okay, so the bag, any player has any one extra turn they can use one instead of drawing the next if you must then return. Okay, so I get for any player extra turn, but these are just for, uh, for the little John extra turns, if I remember correctly. You have one extra turn you can use, yeah. And uh, <laughs> that's probably going to happen, but I hope that this guy moves twice before I move with little John, just because it would be way, way easier. Okay, so the green one is next, the Robin Hood plays next, and the Robin Hood will go over to this maid to ask her, this lady, to ask her a few questions if he's able to reach her in the normal way, which will not happen which means then I will have to use my fast travel thingy and position myself as further as possible and I will interact with the 130 with the lady tile so 130 and it says we need to go page 133 lost in thought the maid hums to herself then she flinches. My goodness, you scared me. What do you want from me? So, do you want to ask her for a way to get into the castle? Want to ask for someone that can break open a chest? Want to ask for aid? Now, I figure I will probably learn a way how to get into the castle, but I'm not really sure who can break open the chest. I mean, okay, so there's probably this guy over here, which is not over here, but he will probably be able to break open the chest. So I'm gonna ask her about break opening the chest and see what she will answer to me. So answer B, uh, I don't know, perhaps someone in the village, go figure. Now flip over the maiden tile. So that was a poor decision. How would she know who can break open the chest? But listen, it is what it is. Okay, so <clears throat> now what happens is we draw an X tile because we didn't do any good. And the next tile is purple one. Yes, yes, that's good. That's okay. I can, I can work with that. And uh, judging by, I think they're very close. But I think little John is closer. So we are going to move the guy, Guy, the Guy, the Guy's born, the guy, whatever you want to call it. We're going to move him over here. And let's read the book because I think we need to put two purple cubes, maybe even more in the bag. One violet cube, I'm constantly saying purple, but I'm reading violet, so I apologize for that, but it's just for me, I want to say purple, not violet. Uh, moves on the shoe currently closest to him, touches the player, the player loses three, movement figures for the remainder of the Leave the red ribbon here, yeah. Okay, so what I learned, he, he loses one of these three, so I can either choose to lose the big one or two small ones. 
which in the long run I think that small ones are very important because you can put white cubes in the bag, you know, stuff like that. Okay, second purple, please be second purple, please. Ah, gray one. Gray one means that anyone can move and anyone moving means that I want to interact with this ship and maybe go somewhere, you know, touch something. Let's see what does, what this ship does. I'm going to move with him. I'm still waiting for this guy, you know, to come a little bit closer so I can run around him. Or I could now, like, use all the running and go to this guy and then hide in this thing over here. That's also an option. Let's go first and see what this ship can do for us. Let's see if I can reach it this way. Of course I can, which means I don't put white cube into the bag, but I get to interact with the page 208 and see what it tells us. Okay, let's see. You find a boat on the river bank. Do you want to use it? If the other end of the river, on the at the other end of the river, you will find the tile 209. So there's a tile over here that I can actually use. And then go and talk to this lady, maybe she can tell me something. Ooh, this is interesting development. If you want to use it, throw two wild cubes into the bag. You may flip it over, take your figure and place it on the boat. Then flip the tile 208 so the boat is visible only once on the game board as if you were traveled along the river with it. If you don't want to use the boat, it remains face up and the next disc is drawn from the bag. Maximum of two people can travel in the boat. Now any player draws the next disc from the bag. So I could use him and uh, but I should maybe stay over here because the discs will show the disc will show up over here and I believe the carriage might show up in this section over here which I would really like if it shows up that would be really nice so my options are either but putting two violet cubes cubes inside here is not an option so I'm just gonna stay like it is I'm in shadows so I'm okay of the guards and everything and I'm just gonna continue playing unfortunately this shifting didn't work for us it could might be a good idea but yeah who knows okay next one is the gray one again which i don't like because i want a gi to move come on gi move and uh, then i will move the robin hood over to this guy and see if he can get me into the and uh, i believe that right now robin hood is kind of a little bit closer you have to kind of measure. No, it's not. You know, going around to get it and going like this way. This is still a closer way to attack him. Okay, let's interact with the tile 100 and see if this guy can smuggle us in or, or do something for us. Okay. The merchant struggles with his wagon. Sweating, he pauses. Do you want to ask for a way to get into the castle? Want to ask for somebody that can break open a chest? Or want to ask for an aid? So, uh, I, I don't believe I can hide in there. He is, after all, a merchant. You know, he struggles to move, so I'm figuring out that he, like, he can't, like, move with me inside. He's already struggling. So I'm going to ask him for someone that can break open a chest for us. Maybe he knows, you know, he has some tools or something. So, yeah. Uh, want to ask him for somebody to open a chest. Well, if my neck of the woods, the village blacksmith would manage it. Now flip over the merchant tile. I mean, I kind of knew that. And this was, by the way, the poorest decision I could take with him. Because I, I can kind of see all the answers in the book. I don't want to show them to you, but I'm, I cover them with my hand. So I don't know what they are before choosing. But... Uh, the blacksmith is not here. I can't see him. So how could I, you know, blacksmith can open the chest. How can I? Oh, man. Okay, so it was the gray one. The Okay, so the next tile goes. Since I haven't, have I, have I, I haven't used the big move, so I will put one white cube in the back. And then the next tile moves. And it's a gi. 
so which means these two go in the bag and then he moves toward the little John which now means I can run past him easily and I will definitely do that and interact with the beggar once I'm I'm done and uh, next one is blue and only one that's left is the red one okay so little John will first do a normal move like nothing happens he just swings by him like this and because of that I put a white cube into the bag and then I don't want to draw a disc I want to use some extra ability I will use some food to make another movement let me just check if it if I work it at normally or you must then return your cube yeah you have one extra turn you can use this turn so <laughs> Yeah, one extra turn you can use this turn. So I will again move around the castle. Can I reach the beggar now if I put this thing over here? You know, I think I'm able to touch the tile. Yes, I am. And I will do it like that. So I will spare this one for running away from him when he starts chasing me. And I hope that's a good decision because if in the next turn if these two purple discs come out before the blue or gray or anything else, then I am roasted. I, I really do hope that beggar knows the way in the castle. So 110, so I'm gonna ask him that if I can. So page 113. At the moment, old card hair sucks the marrow from a chicken bone. Do you want to ask for the way into the castle? Yes. No, I myself have been looking for a way into the castle for quite some time. If I think about the castle kitchen waste, my mouth starts watering. They only open the gates for the carriages. Now flip over the beggar tile. So the beggar was a dud. He tell, told us absolutely nothing. He gave us absolutely nothing. Now the next option is to run toward the this guy over here and maybe ask him maybe in a process ask this guy I I'm really not sure okay so I'm a little bit disappointed how I didn't see that coming but what can you do okay next next disc the last disc in the bag is it the last disc I think it is yeah it is it's the red one and we need to read it what happens because bad stuff happens now carriages will go away stuff the carriages will show up probably continue reading here if you have drawn the red disc carriage escaped into the castle if a carriage is face up in the forest flip over its tile and any octagonal tiles in the castle courtyard we didn't do that uh, it's already there the hope is lost in the land sinks one by for each player draw a seal from the bag and insert it face up into the next seal recess Flip over the state guard, noblemen's, uh, unless then hourglass is on them. Also we need to flip over the carriage tile, octagonal. Oh no, no, if it, if it shows up on the seal, so, sorry, sorry. The guards attack, the guards will not attack, the time will pass, so I will first remove all of these things that I usually forget to do and we are not captured right now or anything we are not attacked by guards so what we need to do is take one seal from the bag so this one and we need to flip the guards whatever numbers they are two three seven and nine two three seven and nine okay so guard seven shows up seven number three number two and number nine number nine can because he's on hourglass and number two guard number two if this is the one who this is the first time we are seeing this guard he never showed up so far over here and 14 from nobleman's 14 17 and 21 so 21 goes away unfortunately and 14 and 17 show up 
or go away. 14, 17, 17 and 14, where are you? 17 also goes away and the 14, 14, 14, where are you number 14? Come on, I need to check the back of the book for the 14 and it's over here and he shows up. Well, that's a blast. Okay, so let's continue uh, with putting everything in the bag and uh, starting another turn. Oh, of course, I forgot. Uh, once I draw it and everything, I need to put this probably on something else. Now flip over the large... Okay, so yeah, the things have... I, I didn't read all the way. Important. Now flip over the large forest tiles, 60 or 70. The one where your secret camp is not located, so it displays the dark events as symbols. 70, so okay, so this one needs to be flipped over. Oh, okay, so it shows us the dark events. Well, do I leave it there? What does it say? If from now on a red or a violet disc is drawn, you will no longer need the book. Instead, simply carry out the depicted events in order. So I guess I'm guessing we we could have established a camp also over here in some different game, but uh, we can now use this part of the map because two stars just never flipped it back over. So yeah, that's really interesting. That's what was confusing me about this tile, they said you will never need it, so return it to the box, but it actually says the same thing, which means there are multiple things that can happen in this game, which is really nice. Okay, so let's put everything uh, back in the bag, and uh, let's see where I need to put my ribbon, red ribbon, next. Leave the red ribbon here. Okay, so let's put all the discs in the bag. And uh, let's continue drawing. Okay, let's start drawing. I had to take a little pause to check out if I may be mistaken uh, the rules or something because I was sure that this tile needs to be flipped up, you know, the, because the blacksmith, we really need him to open the chest, but I don't still know how, I still don't know how to get into the castle and I only have like one, two, three, four, five turns left, which is not good but uh, what can you do right so let's start drawing from the bag and see what happens i guess we are going to the pope over here maybe he knows something in the process maybe i ask this guy we'll see okay first one is the red uh, the red disc which means we need to read all the things that are going no oh, it said we don't have to read anything else now we just do all the stuff that it's over here but uh, this is kind of far away for, for me to see, so I have this one over here. I'm just gonna keep it by my side. And uh, it says that we move carriage into the city, but it's already in a city. And uh, this goes one down per player, and we have to move, uh, we have to draw a disc out of the bag, the, the, the one uh, for those tokens up there but i can't find it because there's a lot of things in the bag and i can't feel it what's cardboard what's plastic okay i found one cardboard it's really hard because there's all kinds of different components in here okay so we have the lion so the lion says that hope goes down one more space so number one and number 12 show up or go away depends so number one shows up and number 12 would probably be somewhere around here. Okay, it's over here. So this guy shows up and then we have 14, 18 and 20. 14, 18 and 20 noblemen. Noblemen 20 goes away. And we have 14 and 18. 18 also goes away. 18 goes away. This girl might know something. I just saw her right now. And uh, number 20, nobleman number 20, where are you? We need you to ask you some stuff. Nobleman number 20. Have I flipped it right now? No. 14, 18, 20 shows up. Yeah, I defeated him. He now shows. He now shows up. Yeah, it's fine. Okay, so we do that. 
then the guards attack and uh, oh <laughs> well this is not good the guard can attack either of these two guys if the attack is happening that means wow this is not what i was uh, hoping for okay so if the guard attacks what happens let me just quickly see uh guard nobleman guard cage rules yeah a player is only safe from the guard completely in the shade Guys, many keep the player when they step on their clearing only after the red has been drawn. If several, I'm uh, I'm reading the rules because uh, two of us are standing over here, so that could be a potential trouble. Trouble. If several players are standing on their clearing, a guard can only ever capture one standing closest to them. If a player has already been captured, the land does not lose another hope if the red disc is drawn again. The captured player can try to free themselves by defeating the guard. Yeah, special case, the guard who got player can also be defeated by a different player. Captured player is free. Okay, so now what happens? He captures the closest one, which is Lil John. So he captures him and we lose one hope, which is definitely not good. And uh, the next thing is one of the timer goes away from the clock and one of the timers go away from all these guys. Okay, so next one is the purple one and we are now in trouble because this guy can super easily be right near the little john because little john being captured doesn't mean he doesn't go toward him at least that's not what it ever said okay so and we need to put two purple cubes per player into the bag because the gi the gi moved and again another purple one which is <laughs> this is the close one he would caught me i was standing here he would probably manages to to get on me if i wasn't captured by the guard so in essence the guard kind of saved me this time which is really whew, well but it will be so hard to defeat the guard right now with the little john but we are definitely going to try and do it at least now I know that only I am playing from now on. And the gray one. So the first gray one I will use for... I will use for Robin Hood to move over here and attack this nobleman. And Robin Hood has a sword and if I remember correctly, sword can greatly help us during the fight. During the defeat action without the bow you may draw one additional cube from the bag. If you have two swords, you may even draw two additional cubes. You can use a maximum of two swords when performing the defeat action. Okay, so I can use a sword to draw extra cube if I can defeat him. So first draw, we draw a white one, which is good because we defeated them, but on the first draw, that's really bad. And uh, it gives us a hat and a two, morale and a hat what does the hat do let's just acknowledge that we have it oh if i have a hat and if i have a robe maybe in combination i can do something if you have the hat and the cloak as i figured you will be ignored by guards and by guy of gisborne this disguise lasts until you try to defeat an opponent you must then return the two, two cubes of your color to the supply well, have I know that sooner, I would most definitely get myself a cloak and... A... Well, this is interesting. If you have that, you can kind of move freely around. Which sounds interesting. Okay, so... Come on, blue one. Blue. R white one, which means both of us move. And first... First, the... Oh, because I haven't done the fast move, I can put one white cube in the bag because of him last turn. And now he will try to defeat the guard because he doesn't move. He puts another white cube in the bag. And then he attacks the guard itself. And let's see what happens. So first cube, purple. Second cube, 
purple. And a third cube, come on, escape, man. Don't stay here. Purple. Nothing happens. You can try to defeat it next turn. But the, the Robin Hood plays next. And he will most definitely keep on running. Just keep on running and try to get to the Pope and see if we can learn something from it. So it's like this. Okay, and since I haven't run, I will put one white cube into the bag and draw a next disc from the bag, which is the green one. Again, Robin Hood runs like the wind. And I could even maybe possibly try and reach it with running like this and I almost no I barely touched the tile so I will count it as yes I managed to get to him so 150 the Pope probably knows some stuff okay so some 150 gold for Richard 153 the priest makes the sign of the cross as he recognizes you. Do you now want to rob the holy church too? Then you're too late. The sheriff has already confiscated everything valuable. He has even stolen the bells that King Richard donated to us to melt them down. What a sacrilege. Uh, now I'm a little bit confused. I thought that people like villagers like us because we stole from them but okay whatever so do you want to ask him to wait to get into the castle do you want to ask him for someone that can break open the chest or do you ask for an aid so what's the way to get in the castle he must know something so i'm gonna ask him about the castle i see god is still holding his hands over you to protect you so i also want to help you yes finally I mean, that, that's my comment, not the comment from the story. The ropes that once sounded the bells now hang uselessly in my tower. Take them. They might help you get over the castle walls. You may now place one cube of your color on the image of the rope. And we got the rope, which you definitely know what it means. It means that we can go over here and up here and into the castle and, and go to the wall. But still, we don't know how to open it. Now, there, this guy showed up that wasn't here previously, so we maybe try to interact with him, possibly, who knows. I now see something. I now see like this drainage over here that looks very interesting, but I can't interact with it. Okay, flip over the priest tile. Okay, so we got the help from the priest, which is, which is really good. So the priest is uh, no longer here. But uh, this guy is still captured, which does not look good. But we have two tries to like free him. So first, come on, where are the discs? Okay, the blue disc, that's what I wanted. Okay, the blue disc says that we do nothing and we then attack uh, the... We put the white cube in the bag and then we attack the guard and we put one cube out. We take the second cube out come on is this really going to be like that and a third cube white cube okay finally so we defeated the guard nice he gave us one hope and we can stand up on the tile he gives us one more hope and we put an hourglass on him so he doesn't show up right away and uh, as my second action I will take this cube and uh, do my second action because I really want to run away from this guy, the Gisborne fella. And I want to interact with this guy. He is, after all, a woodsman, so he might know somebody who can pry open besides this guy, you know, who can pry open. We need to find out really quickly now who can open the chests and we really quickly need to go up here and up here and into this vault. So we have so few turns that I'm probably going to run all the way. Okay, so some cloth residue. We interact now with 140, book 140, page 140, tile, however you want to say it. And uh, let's see 
where we need to continue reading. Page 143. The carpenter looks at you with blinking. The X lies heavy in his calloused hand. What do you want? He asks quietly. Do you want to ask for, how, for a way how to get in a castle? We've done that, we know. Want to ask for someone that can break open a chest? Yes, that's what we want to ask him. What kind of a chest are you talking about? Perhaps you want to steal the war chest meant for our beloved king? Flip over the carpenter tile. What? He, he didn't... Wait, have I read this correctly? 143? Uh, he didn't give us anything. Flip over the carpenter tile. This, that. Okay, so I still have no clue how to open the war chest and I don't like it at all. Okay, and the last last disc is the gray one, if I can find it in this bag of all the things. And uh, I will use the gray one to move one of them and it will be a Robin Hood because he can go here and interact now right away with this and don't lose time when the next turn starts so we're gonna go over here and of course I will try to do it in these small movements so I can put one white cube into the yeah but that's not gonna happen that's too far away which means I need to use this thing over here and then like so and we interact with the 111 and I hope this is the correct way to go if it's not I'm going to be like super crazy because this means that we are going to probably lose this one 111 you may only continue reading here if you have the rope object and I do move the cube of your color from the image of the rope back to the supply now flip over the tile 111 when it's your turn again you can move up the down alongside of course other players can also use the rope any player draws the next disc from the back yada 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 but basically what it happens we flip it over like this and now we have a rope that we can just move on like it was a normal way to move you know all that okay so we are done with that uh, next up is put everything in here and try to try to get inside and see if we can win somehow I mean why this guy showed up we can interact with him he looks like he looks like he has a rope so that's maybe for an escape I still can't figure out the way maybe I can run with the with the little John over here to this to this girl and uh, see if if I can talk to her but I still need to attack the guards because if this goes down then we are oh my god this is going to be a tough one first disc out of the bag is the gray one and as I said I really want to run with the Robin Hood itself right now so I'm just gonna go like crazy fast I have the speed he says like this and then I will put it over here and then stop over here which means if this attack uh, if this guard attacks I am done he will catch me which means I need to stay in the shadows probably over here until the red one goes out then I can run out and do stuff uh, but at least this guy will ignore me when I'm in the castle So what's the best thing to do right now? I believe yeah, I don't want to get captured. I mean I can I will lose so much. It's better. I will risk it. I will risk it I will just end up here in the shadows like this. I can easily reach it No white cubes go in the bag and I will just wait for the red disc to get a, to show up so I can then run the purple disc shows up which means the Guy of Gisborne is trying to catch little John 
Okay. And two purple cubes go in the back. I forgot about that. That's the first thing that happens. So the next disc out of the bag is again a purple one, which is somewhat good because now I know that I can move like a little bit more freely. But there's now a lot of purple cubes in the bag again. So it's going to be a tough one. Come on, red disc, red disc, red disc, green. Okay, I guess now it's just time to run out and hope for the best. Uh, okay, first, let me just check something. I just thought about it now. But what if I, like, run, I can get into the shadows. Yes, I can. I can run past them. Oh, that's good. So, I will run over here and I will end up in the shadows, which means they will the guards will not spot me. And that's fine. Okay, now... The next disc is the white one, which means both players go. And uh, I really don't want to get captured by this guy. Or attacked by... Oh, man. Let's run with Little John also in here. Because I really don't want to get caught by this one and then lose one of these. I'm really not sure. I'm thinking now, do I lose this for the entirety of the game if he touches me? Or just for this one scenario? Because it says for this adventure, but I'm really not sure. I have to check that out before continuing my next sessions. So yeah, we need to, we need to boost the hope up. Otherwise we are going to lose fast, which means we need to attack the guard to get some hope. And then try to outrun the Gisborne guy. Okay, so let's do it like this. And then we are going to attack this guard. We are going to interact with him. And we're going to pull three cubes from the back. Okay, so first cube is white cube right away. Which is good. Which means that he is defeated. Little John is kicking ass left and right. Which means that this goes to five. And now I really want to interact with her, but then this guy will ca would capture me. For now, this is all, all clear and we don't have anything to interact with. So, what I'm thinking is just to continue playing and see what will happen next. Okay, so the next disc is the red disc, which means the carriage moves to the castle, but it's already in the castle itself. So... For each player, we move this one space down. We have to draw a wooden disc. And it says all kinds of different things. So, 7 and 8 show up. Guards, 7 and 8. 7 can't because he's now really busy. And number 8... Oh, I forgot also to move, put this on this guy. And the guard number 8 shows up. Where's the guard number 8? Number 8 is here, which means he goes away. That's the one that was sick, that was eating those mushrooms. <laughs> I completely forgot about him. 13 and 16. Okay, so guard uh, nobleman 13 is here. And nobleman 16 could be somewhere around here. 15, 21, 19. Come on, where are you? 15 is here, right? 16. So this nobleman shows up, the one with the hat. We just need now one with the robes. I guess this one has the robe, judging by the picture. So if I could attack this one, then this one, I could move freely, ignore the Gisborne and everything. Wow, that would be awesome. And uh, yeah, then we remove all of these clocks so they can show up and uh, we remove one of these. And we are left with like three more turns before we find out how to break open the chest and everything. So yeah, let's draw a disc from the bag, a blue disc. And the next one will be gray. So that means that... That means... We could easily go and talk to her, see if she can tell us something about... Like maybe she knows him, you know, stuff like that. Let's risk it a little bit because, you know... We have to try and win somehow if we can. So I'm just going to move up to here. 
I really don't have no need to go any further than that. And we are going to interact with the tile number 200 and see what can we find out. Okay, so, oh, it's you, whispers me Megan, and I'm shouting. <laughs> what can I do for you? I want to ask, uh, want to ask her about uh, weighing the castle. No, want to ask for somebody that can break open the chest. Oh, come on, let's let's ask her that and see what happens. Okay, uh, I would rather my husband kept out of this. Oh, it's his husband. Yes, that's cool. But yes, Alex will definitely help you open the chest. I will ask him. Flip over the blacksmith's wife tile and. If it's not yet face up, the blacksmith tile 206 in the middle of the village. Ah, oh, I could have done this so much sooner. So, what happens now? I finally have someone that I can interact with. I mean, I finally found someone that will tell me to flip over this guy. And if I, when I was here with the Robin Hood, if you remember, if I went down the river, and if I wanted to talk to her, I would already have that and then talk to him. He would give me the rope and I would be... Oh my god, it would be so much better. Okay, so now the last disc is the gray one, of course. And we are going to use it for little John. And I'm just going to move him as closest over to over here, but still touching the tile. Just so I can get some help, you know, from from the from the blacksmith himself okay so we interact with the tile 206 and uh, uh, so it says you may only continue reading here if you have the chest and I don't have the chest yet well that was a poor decision on my on my part so let us just hope that this guy doesn't catches us uh, what happens is all the tiles are out uh, so we just throw them all in the bag you know shuffle that bag a little bit and start playing uh, let's see I just hope to get like you know Robin Hood or somebody to move first to go faster to get the chest and then talk to this guy next without this key moving because I think he will, might be able to catch me and of course he moves first of course he moves first because I mentioned his name uh, two purple cubes go into the bag and he goes toward me I guess I'm still safe this turn but this is going to be a ooh, tough one so next one is gray one and I will use it for the Robin Hood most definitely I will use it for Robin Hood and uh, I forgot, can I move over the people? I believe I can't. I believe it's uh, forbidden to move over the tiles. No, it's not actually. Wait, let me just reference it a little bit more. So I can, can't move over the roofs or the woods or stuff, but it clearly doesn't say anything about the tiles. So I guess I am okay. I guess I'm okay to move it over the tile so I can just run past him over here. And uh, I can't move over solid objects, but I can move past him, you know. I'm like sneaking around. Let's see if I can just go around him if possible just for the sake of being more realistic with it okay so this one will not work but this one will definitely give me enough movement to touch the tile and interact with the tile 72 okay let's see what the tile 72 tells us and if I'm not sure if you can see it, but I'm completely in the dark, so I can't be seen by this guard. Uh, 72. I had enough movement, so let's say I moved over here, just, you know, so to be, like, 100% clear. 72, 72, 72. Tile, 72. The heavy oak door to the treasure trove appears to be firmly locked. 
You want to start looking around for something to break open the lock when suddenly the door quietly opens. A lucky coincidence. Now remove the tile 72 from the game board and place your figure in the center of the treasure trove. So we remove this tile. Whoops. Come on. From the game board without destroying it. And we are in the center of the board. You enter the dark treasure trove. Only a single candle flickers in a candlestick. There, there they are. Chests full of gold coins and the other possessions brutally extorted for the from the residents. You may now place one cube of your color on the image of the chest. So I now have a chest also. Okay, so let's see. Uh, task you have to find a way for the player with the chest to leave the castle and to take it to someone able to open it note just like the other objects you can pass the chest amongst yourselves now place the gold ribbon here between pages 72 and 73 in case you want to look up your task I forgot how the exchange works so I'll have to remind myself a little bit but now we need to run from all the way up here we need to run to all the way up here and we have three turns to do that and basically i can run with him over here so he can take it like on the halfway or something if something like that happens oh boy this figure is really annoying me this guy over here he is really my issue okay so how the trading works, right, right, right. How we can trade with each other. How we can trade, move, save energy, perform one of three actions, defeat, pass an objective. If you're touching a thing, oh, we, so we just have to touch figures and we just pass the objectives to each other and that's that. Okay, so not that complicated as I thought. Okay, so let's draw the disc can see what happens the purple disc and uh, that's what I was afraid of now I have to figure out which way is the closest way for him to get to me I would say it's up here you know because it's shorter that means that uh, he will block me from you know going around here it will be super Tough. but you know what I remember just now I have this thing over here which will give me one extra move for my turn which would be good if I went if I'm able to go up all the way to the castle then this guy would ignore me and just stand there and do nothing so the next one is the gray one and we are going to start running with the Robin Hood the fastest way we can out of the castle now I know I can push this over here and then he can jump from here. So I'm thinking about that as an option. Uh, I can also move with little John around here, you know, run over here, maybe kill this guard, then run over here, activate this one, move it over here. And then he goes over here, jumps and goes over to this guy. So that's an option, but I don't know if, Oh my god, this is going to be a tough one. So I'm going to try and do that. I'm going to try and do that just because I know that uh, both of these guys, Robin Hood and Little John, will play at least two times because there's a white disc and two uh, of discs of each of their colors, respectively, in the bag. And uh, that means that he will play two times. He can go up here or he can run and then, like, he still. Uh, oh no, the Robin Hood has a bow. So Robin Hood can probably run over here and kill someone like this guard kill it you know so because i need to jump from over here to this haystack stuff like that so i'm going to do that i'm going to try and run toward the okay so over here and since I have nothing to do right now, so I use the gray one to move the Robin Hood first. And I will use his bow to try and kill this guard. I can easily reach him. And all I need to do is draw a white cube from the bag. Purple. First cube is purple. 
the second cube is purple. Come on, don't do that to me. Give me a white cube, please, please. I need it. Three purple cubes, so I wasted my bow. Uh, I have a sword, I know, but I can't. I can't uh, attack because I'm attacking with the bow. I can't use my sword, which is most unfortunate. Okay, so the next disc out of the bag. Next disc is a blue disc, which means little John will run away toward the toward this haystack thing, and I can like stay over here. And then the next turn I can run over here, interact with it and everything. I believe I can reach it easily, yeah. So I'm just gonna attack this guard. So I'm going to try and kill the, that guard and get my hopes up. Yeah, white one, of course. Now then I kinda don't need it, I get it. So he is killed and we will put this over here and then this over here and we remove all of these. And we just hope that this guy doesn't move first for the next turn, otherwise... Oh, no, no, I'm going to be fine, I'm going to be fine. Uh, the next disc out of the bag is the red one, which I have no fear of, because... Uh, this moves two spaces down, because the, I'm in the shadow and I killed the guard over here, which means I'm fine. So I just take one more seal from the bag, and it's a seal... Oh, that moves this one to one, which is not good. Guard 6 and 12 show up. Guard number 6 is just down, which is good. He does not show up. Ha! I'm like a pro. Uh, where's the guard number 12? 12, it's here. He goes away. He's been here for some time now. He didn't see anyone the entire game, which is good. So, and then the nobleman's 15 and 19. 19 goes away. Yeah, so my rogue is not attainable right now it's not that i need it and we have this guy over here okay so that's done then these removed and this one is removed the guards attack but there is no guard to attack us and then we pull the last the last disc out from the bag and it's the green this is the green oh no it's not the last one it's the green disc and we still have the white disc right okay so the green disc he just moves here and then goes over here and then we move on to this tile like that and we attack this guard and we take one cube which is purple but now I can use my sword if I end up drawing just purple cubes like I'm doing right now which is insane okay the white cube thank god which means this goes one up and then this tile flips over he's gone we defeated him man this is going to be so close and we put the one hourglass on it and uh, the last thing now the last thing is this white disc which means both players move first we are going to play with little john because he needs to do his thing first oh <laughs> i wasn't thinking but maybe, just maybe, uh, it might happen that this does not work that way in this scenario because uh, I figured throughout the scenarios, you know, once this gives us two white cubes, other times it gives us something else, so it does different things, so we have to be careful about that. But, yeah, but uh, oh, I'm drawing from the bag, but I have nothing to draw. 214, we have to interact with that and see if we are able to do oh thank god we are thank god we are the wagon is loaded with fresh straw you can use the wagon in two ways we are going to use it in the number two way if we could use a bit of help you can also roll the wagon up to the castle wall you may flip over the wagon tile and also tile 215 by the castle gate so that the straw wagon is visible as though it has been rolled to the castle gate note your standing figure remains on the tile 214 a player can jump from the castle wall onto the straw wagon for this their movement figure must touch the straw and that is that actually 
so you can go into the castle that way but yeah what happens is uh, this thing and I stay in the dark and then this thing is flipped over Ooh, it has a question mark here we could kind of interrupt with it somehow and uh, then I will move with my Robin Hood figure and we need to touch the hay and we are in the hay which means the guy doesn't see us he will go for this guy because when you are in the hay you are safe to go and uh, since we just moved the regular turn we just put one white cube into the bag and I think that's all the discs everything right yeah it is okay so this is last to se uh, second to last turn now this turn and one more turn and we are done which means I really need to run with the Robin Hood over here next to this guy I have this thing over here that I can use for anybody even for the Robin Hood so I just might use it depending which of these I pull out from the bag so first of all is the red one which is kind of good because that means that uh, oh yeah this is going to be a tough one so this one goes two spaces down which is fine and we need to draw another one of these uh, tiles where, where is it the last one from the bag yeah this <laughs> oh man see I have to move this one one space down and since there's no not no more uh, spaces to move I need to remove one of these which means by the end I will have to remove one of these from the book and uh, that means that oh boy that means that we have one last turn to try and uh, defeat this game if able the guardman will attack now nothing will happen and uh, yeah I believe I'm doing this correctly I believe I'm moving them for the red one top hourglass from the board bed and from the other. Yeah, if hope is at zero, you have to remove another one. The hope is at zero. Uh, this one doesn't mean nothing, but I have to remove an extra hourglass. So, oh, no, wait a second. Wait a second. That means I kind of played a little bit wrong. I, ha I haven't yet, but no. I have to remove this. I have to remove this like a regular way. That's what this is telling us, to remove one. And then we have to remove one from the book. No, but I was doing correctly all the way. But if it's zero, yeah. Yeah, both of these are uh, moved away. And this is my last turn trying to go to over here and open it and hopefully win the scenario. I'm really not sure if that is what's going to happen right now, but we'll have to see. Of course, I have to move the guards three and five to either show them up or to remove them. So the guard number three goes away. And the guard number five, where could the guard number five be? Somewhere around here. Okay, so it's over here. And got uh, and got and 14 and 16 noblemen. 14 and 16. So 16 goes away. And then this 14 also goes away. Which is most unfortunate. And then we pull another disc from the bag. Oh, I don't want purple discs now. The white one, the white one means that I can play with both guys and then I can use this one to give the Robin Hood his next turn, which I would gladly do. Okay, so what I'm going to do is first, I'm going to move with the, oops, with this little John. I'm going to move over here and interact with the tile 117 maybe I can get something you know from it or maybe interact with this tile and kind of hmm yeah no I'm gonna interact with 170 and see what I get from there maybe I get something good a metal shimmer attracts your attention these are the remains of an old suit of armor. It's barely usable, but on its side lay, lays a small bag. Therein you find the several pieces of gold. You may now place one cube of your color on the image of the bag of gold. Now flip over the armor tile. Which means 
I get another of these cubes, which means I can get all kinds of extra movements if I need. Like if the end of scenario is not just to get in touch with this guy and pry open the chest. If I still have to move somewhere, then I can use these cubes and like run away. And because I use only small moves, I will put one white cube into the bag and I will then try and reach. First, I'm going to play a normal movement just so I can put some white cube into the bag. And then without risking anything, I'm going to spend one of these to give the green one a turn or the Robin Hood, you know, so he can run. Can he reach it like this? Maybe? No, we can't. So we need to run a wee bit faster, which means I can't use my, okay, like this. And then he will interact with the tile 206. And let's see if that is the end of scenario and we have we managed to open up the gold. You may only continue reading here if you have the chest and we have the chest. Alex the blacksmith greets you. When you tell him what you need his help for, he immediately agrees. He hates the sheriff and would prefer to fight him and his men himself. He immediately helps you have the heavy chest into his smithy. Remove the cube of your color from the image of the chest. Okay, I guess the scenario is not done yet. The strong man quickly fetches the tool to break open the heavy iron fittings of the chest. It takes a moment, then the iron gives away. The light lid quietly opens. As you look in, you think you are dreaming for a second. That is not possible, whispers the blacksmith. That cannot be. You have won, thank God. You will find out what was found in the chest in the next adventure. A tough decision. Special reward. While, whilst you gave new hope to the land, the people in the secret camp were not sitting idle. Now flip over tiles 30, 32, 34, 37, 38, all in the forest so that you have all the three, three bridges available for the next adventure. And that is that, my kid. That was a close one. Now, wow, this scenario was so close to losing uh well i i just i'm just afraid to think what would happen if i draw like two purples first something like that i don't know this was insanely great scenario it was so much fun i mean i knew from the start that blacksmith i need to find him somehow but i was not sure how and uh, uh, my intuition told me that's the right way to go but how to do it that's the part of discovering and the way that you know that there's multiple ways to get in. If that uh, if that chariot showed up on the lower space when I was near it, I might be able to run toward it, maybe pull out two white cubes from the bag, you know, and try to get in and be in the castle almost in turn two or turn three. It really depends on when you will draw some of these tiles. You can like draw them way later in the game when you are like more set up for stuff like that. You can kind of hover around them and maybe expect them to show up and then just jump on the board. It's just knowing that there's multiple ways to go over from one place to another, you know, to do stuff in different ways. It's just mind blowing and I really want to explore everything. So yeah, uh, that was that. That was uh, episode three. Uh, do join me next time when we are going to go to episode four called Tough Decision. And if you want to see it right away, you can support me on Patreon and that way you can see all of these games in advance before everyone else. Otherwise, you'll have to wait for some time to sh for them to show up on the channel, you know, and then you forgot what was all about and you have to rewatch the first episode, you know, stuff like that. So please do support me, uh, do consider supporting me on Patreon. It will help out a lot uh, because I everything I earn over there, I just pour back into the channel just give everything better to the better equipment better everything so yeah that is that thank you all for watching thank you for subscribing for spending time with me and uh, join me in episode four uh, until then pozdrav